Rick's Place um, primarily provides bereavement support to families with young children, and our number one goal is to give kids a safe place so that they can meet one another and they can make things that help them remember the person who died while also learning new coping skills and new ways to express themselves. You know, I think for anybody going through a loss of a loved one, mm -hmm. um, I think this place is, is, it provides stability. It provides you with stability. Um, it gives you a sense of support um, because that's just probably new for a lot of people, um, experiencing a loss, uh, a loved one and death, and, and just trying to process that and deal with it. Um, this seems to be a very comfortable place where I think people can come, they can get good information, um, and they get resources, and, and they feel supported and they get some sense of how to go on. So I think that's what, uh, I don't think, I know that's what Rick's Place provided for us. Uh, anything about Rick's Place, we, we try to spread the story of Rick's Place so that people are uh, more aware of what we are doing and where their money is going. Uh, if they are donating prizes for our, our coming fundraisers, our golf tournament, um, they know why they're giving and, and knowing that they're giving for a, a worthwhile organization. My name is Donald Mitchell, and I am a father, single dad, or a single dad. My wife passed away three years ago, three daughters in the Springfield school system. Currently, I've just been elected as the president of the uh, board of directors uh, for Rick's Place. I'm Shelley Bath Len, and um, I grew up in Texas, and I'm married, and have a nine-year-old son. We live in Long Meadow. My name is Christina Bracci, and I am from East Long Meadow, Mass. Um, I am on the board of directors for Rick's Place and have been for the past six years. My main focus, um, my main responsibilities, I guess, would be in uh, the fundraising and uh, the event planning. We always have a, a big annual event and um, I'm highly involved in that event. Heart to Heart is our annual event that happens uh, around um, Valentine's Day. So this year it was, at February, it was February 8th. Um, and it's a fun event where people can come and get dinner, dance to a live band. We've got great uh, items that have been uh, donated from year to year, uh, either as part of our silent auction or teacup auction. Mm -hmm. And um, we always try to bring chocolate that's been donated from area um, vendors uh, so that um, diners and attendees at the event can get a taste of some chocolate. Um, and it's a, it's a big fundraiser that helps us raise about a third of our budget. Um, we can't do this work without fundraising. Um, we also knew this year we'll be um, running the Rick Thorpe uh, Memorial Golf Tournament, and that'll be in the fall. So in addition to our on-site program in Wilbraham, we also do outreach to the schools. Mm -hmm. We work with the schools to help us identify kids who, for whom they share the experience of someone close in their life dying. And then we are willing to come in and create a group of these kids and work with them once a week for eight weeks. And um, it's been a great partnership with a lot of school districts in the area, meeting the needs of kids during the school day uh, in the school. And we also are available to um, different community groups. For example, we've partnered uh, several times with Bay State Hospice and Bay State Hospital on providing um, just a family activity where the whole family comes and we do a different activities with them. So we'd love to find other um, partnerships with other agencies to do similar programs. And then the last um, unique program that we're running currently in another school but not as a support group, we're actually going into every classroom in an elementary school, so pre-K through fifth grade, and we're reading a book um, that has the theme of, of grief and loss and we're reading it out loud and engaging the kids in questions about the stories mm -hmm. and getting them, giving them the opportunity to maybe share their experience with someone or even an animal in their life that has died. And it's a really great program, not only because we're going, we're talking to every kid, but it also um, works to normalize that actually all living things die and that we can all support each other. Um, so it's, I like to think of it as kind of a proactive approach to, uh, to supporting kids who are grieving. Well, I got involved about three years ago when my wife passed. Um, they referred us um, by way of hospice. We started attending the, uh, the groups and it was, it was a great thing for us. Um, so after a while, you know, we've, we've been here, this is our third year now, um, I just felt I wanted to get involved and, and try to give back in a more meaningful way based on what Rick's Place was able to offer my family and I.
Well, it provides a, a safe place for these children to come where they can uh, meet other children of their same age group who are going through the same loss, the same pain that they're dealing with. And um, so they know they're not alone and it's a, a safe place for them to come and share their feelings and their emotions. Mr. Thorpe actually uh, gave me a call in um, fall of 2006. I uh, also run uh, The Garden, a center for grieving children and teens in Northampton. Mm -hmm. And he um, introduced himself, told me about his son and what happened to him, and asked if I would help him um, open up Rick's place. And uh, I said, of course I would. And so we did, March of 2007. The Garden was founded in 1998 by Barbara Weiner Dubeck and um, it's based at the YMCA in Northampton. And similar to Rick's Place, we work with uh, families who have young children between the ages of five and 18, when someone close in their life has died. Um, being in Northampton, more families from Franklin and Hampshire County go to the garden. And um, the program runs on Sunday afternoons and is also uh, free of charge to families. I'm Brian Bracci. Uh, I went to uh, high school in this town. Uh, Rick Thorpe was a classmate of mine. 1984, a class of 84 at Minichog. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, was a friend, a teammate, uh, playing football for a couple of seasons. Uh, also a terrific person, athlete, and a scholar. Also uh, never put on airs. So even though he had all those gifts, he didn't really uh, play that up at all. Mm -hmm. I believe I saw him last at our class reunion uh, 99, it was our 15th reunion, and it was in the next town in Hamden. And I spent some time talking with him. And, uh, you know, less than two years later, I would have found out he had died uh, September 11th, 2001 morning. Also, I remember hearing that night that uh, they were expecting. So basically, um, Rick's child, Alexi, um, who was about the same age as my son, Seth. She ended up being born in 2000. And so she's without a dad the following uh, summer. So, um, you know, I had to think about that for a while and it, it, it affected me it, for days and weeks. Then I found out a bunch of other classmates, which some of them are still around on the periphery, mm -hmm. some of them are former board members, uh, started a uh, scholarship program uh, with a golf tournament. So, you know, it's easy. Um, you show up, play, ask people to play golf. Um, we raised money and we had scholarships. So that went for five years or so. Mm -hmm. Then the Thorpes, Rick's parents, Marilyn and Ray, uh, came up with another idea. Why not do something that also helps in some way in the community, more than just giving a scholarship to uh, high school kids from, from my alma mater? And they uh, came up with the idea of a grieving uh, center and a bereavement center for kids right where we're sitting. So I signed up right away. Uh, I wasn't taken in the first initial uh, pilot study, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And then right after that pilot study, I started here as a facilitator. I worked with the kids for about two seasons, about two years. Was asked to join the board around the time with my wife continued as a facilitator in uh, what we call the caregivers group, which is not therapy, not anything uh, special except sitting and listening and keeping the group moving. The caregiver group is usually the surviving parent. Okay. And, uh, and that, that's how I met Donald, our current president. He was in the program and I was still working as a facilitator and sitting on the board as, as I continue to do. We like to think of it as a fun and happy place. Um, of course, it's sad, the reason that they're coming, but um, I've seen so many friendships that bloom here at Rick's Place. Um, kids that would have never, you know, come across each other um, because they're from different schools, even different towns, so they make new friends. And the adults are also making friends with others. And, um, and so the whole um, Rick's Place becomes a community for these families that, you know, share an experience but um, you know, and, and have that connection. So we like to think that it's a fun and lively place, but it can also be um, you know, a time that kind of takes us to a deeper place and, and some feelings and emotions definitely do come up.
Well, we have a monthly meeting and we collaborate on many different ideas, um, ways that we can reach out in the community, ways that we can raise funds, um, expanding our board, trying to think of members in the community who might be a good fit for our board. So we're, we're kind of all collaboratively looking at um, you know, different ways that we can help the organization. Oh, we cannot do this work without volunteers. So uh, go to our website, www.ricksplacema.org, or give me a call, 413-348-3120. Uh, we have two times a year that we typically do our trainings for volunteers, and we're looking for adults that can make the commitment. It's about a six hour a week, uh, six hours every other week commitment, um, and we match them up with a certain group of kids where they will plan and lead the activities, and we provide them um, a cushion of supervision and support so that they um, feel comfortable leading those activities and. Um, and then we can also work with them to, um, you know, if there's a specific behavior that we're seeing with kids or, um, you know, kids that are either really quiet, we help them um, find ways to draw them out. So we like to, um, you know, we want to make sure that our adult volunteers are also getting um, support, just like the support that they're giving to the kids. It's a good place for, for anyone who has experienced a loss um, recently or or years ago and, and, and they just don't know there's just a lot of just unknown with death and, and trying to deal with that and again process it is um, is very challenging so and and I think we're the only place around here in Western Mass that provides the service so right. um, you know we don't have much competition I know that if my children ever had to deal with that kind of a loss I would want an organization like this around so I wanted to be part of something that was helping children who have you know dealt with something that is tragic and very sad. I would say, you know, it's it's been twofold. I would think one, my children now have a place to express themselves freely, and um, and and they know that they're not in it by themselves. I think a lot of a lot of times kids and you know they just think you know when they lost a loved one that no one understands them, and then when you put them in a room full of 20 other kids who are experiencing the same thing, I think it, it, it normalizes it a little bit. Uh, and the thing that it did for me is it just gave me a sounding board to, to, to talk to other parents, to just hear how they're dealing with grief and how it's affecting them and their children. Um, and it just gave me some, some coping strategies. So um, it was helpful for both of us. I was so intrigued and, and amazed by the work that it does. I'm, I'm on the board. And so now I'm trying to lead the organization and, and trying to expand our service area um, and, and trying to expand programs to help more families. I feel like what I've learned here is a grief process doesn't always look like what you expect it to look like. I'll use an example from the first year. I was working with some, a couple of, I think we had a couple of boys and girls separate. It just wasn't that many kids. As of January, there was 35 kids on site here. I had a couple of the boys, we were doing an activity and we were here on site and we're doing something with colors. And I see one of the boys is red, orange. And I was like, oh, I, I think I know what that means. He's, he's angry or he has, a, you know, he has a strong emotion. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. He said, those colors signified hope. Totally blown away. You know, don't, don't hesitate. I, I would just tell him to try it. I say, listen, it's no pressure. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like it, you can pass. That's one of the favorite, that's one of our favorite slogans that we live by here. But I would just tell people, listen, just come, listen to what's, what's being offered, and, and, and if you like it, then, then decide to stay. You know, it's, it's a no pressure environment, um, but if you feel um, lost, if you feel that, you know, you, you need some sense of direction for you and or your child to try to get you through that process, mm -hmm. um, this, this is an outstanding place to be. The best part is being in, in this room here and just looking at the old photos and seeing some of the, the children that have already come through the program and are doing well and, and reminiscing. I mean, I feel like if I can't work here another year, I've, I've already have enough memories to last me a lifetime. It provides hope, stability, fun and happy place, support, 